Don in London. Hello, it's July 6th. Is that right? Yes, July 6th. All day. My video is all about recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour, or both. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour around that. Addicted to people, places and things. Wanting to be in the right place, wanting to be with the right people, wanting the right things, and doing the right things. So these days life has changed dramatically. So. I'm in recovery one day at a time. Alcohol, I don't take any drink one day at a time. And I try to be with the right people in the right places, doing the right things. Where my needs are met and my wants are forgotten. Trying to be something like perfect. And these days realising there, there is no perfect. I suppose a serene day is as good as it gets. That is where life my feelings actually fit with what is going on so my mood is as it can be based on experiences my feelings fit what is going on and that's a big change for me because when I was addicted to alcohol or rather in the malady I'm still an addict but I'm in recovery that's the way I look at it and I'm in recovery for one day and that's today so everything is possible today within the life I have and the place where I live with the things that I've got and who knows how it might change it can to the good or to the bad just as life is but what's helped me along the way well family friends community and medical people kept me alive long enough to f find out that life could get no worse and I had a moment of clarity which was I cannot live like this anymore and I'm going to die and that was at the end of several hospital visits where life was hanging by a thread <coughs> so how, how, dark, how dark does it have to get before we actually get to a place where we actually accept we need help and help is available that's a personal journey I don't know how that turns out but I found out how to live sober with the help of a lot of people including family friends and community and medical prof professionals and the experience strength and hope I get on a daily basis comes from a fellowship of people and that fellowship is called AA Alcoholics Anonymous I never speak for AA cannot, will not, don't want to AA is full of people unique and authentic in their life journey and they speak about their recovery where they will so I do the same and I try and help by sharing how it was and how it is today and then there are ways to get sober so fellowship and AA has provided me with a solid foundation to keep on going hopefully in the right direction and also there are other ways to keep sober but I haven't found them to be long lasting because in the past I used to try and fix myself and very often the solutions to recovery are about fixing again when indeed life is ongoing the journey is ongoing so we need help on a daily basis to sort out our feelings and I found that people in the fellowship of AA are more in tune with how they feel about life and how to deal with life and how to cope with it so what does AA do? first off it doesn't make any promises it just says uh, sober we have a chance but here is the AA preamble shared at every meeting and you know AA is about reality real life, living real life real people unique and authentic in this one moment on their life journey so this is what AA says about itself Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy 
and that applies to what I do here. This is quite separate to AA. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And the reason why I always emphasise that is I can't speak for other people when it comes to recovery. I can only share what's working for me. And AA does work for me, so it would be foolish to say, oh, I'm in recovery and I did it all on my own. That would be a very prideful statement and quite untrue. I needed every ounce of help I could get from any source. I was desperate enough to ask anywhere and everywhere. Not that I would join a cult or anything like that. What I found is that AA, when we understand it in its full form, is simply about living life and reality as it is. Emotional and spiritual sobriety. Emotional, feelings working as they may. Spiritual, living in the moment of now. So our feelings are right with the moment of now. And physically, we do have to work on dealing with the addictions. And it was suggested to me, try 90 days without. But don't try and do it all on your own. Come to meetings and listen to what people have got to say about how they got into recovery. So I'm sharing here from uh, the wisdom of the fellowship in many ways. But in a, a sort of way which does not break anonymity for anyone else. It's a personal decision how we want to live with our recovery and most of us were trying to hide the fact that we drank and I'm not trying to hide the fact that I drank it anymore I just t tell it as it is how it's working for me one of the things I share is from the daily reflections book from AA and in it it has 365 readings all about the 12 steps and the 12 traditions of the fellowship the 12 steps, the basic toolkit to keep sober, a way to live life positively and also deal with all the negative parts of life, and the 12 traditions which hold the fellowship together. And these are not laws, regulations, or laws, regulations, what's the other word I use? Rules, yes. Not rules, not laws, not regulations. It was discovered early in AA to apply rules, laws and regulations to anybody who is trying to come out of addiction is impossible because we will fight against it. We need our freedom and that's what the 12 steps does. It gives us back our freedom on a daily basis, contingent on asking for help. And the daily reflection from the fellowship, identifying fear, the chief activator of our defects I'll talk, talk about that in a moment, has been self-centred fear. And generally, self-centred fear is being fear of being found out and uh, being secretive about what's going on. Because who wants to admit, who cares to admit that they're an alcoholic? Well, I do now. I have done for years. Simply because uh, it makes no difference in my life whether people know or they don't. I prefer they know, because if they are prejudiced against me for being in recovery, all well and good. I don't need to deal with people who don't like me. Big change. I always thought I had to uh, bend myself to fit with other people and I'd rather be myself and deal with life as I can. So it's not about pleasing other people or fearing what other people think of me these days. Recovery is tough enough. I need people on my side who are willing to help. When I feel uncomfortable, irritated or depressed, I look for fear. The, this evil corroding thread is the root of my distress. Fear of, fear of failure, fear of others' opinions, fear of harm and many other fears. I have found a higher power who does not want me to live in, in fear and as a result the experience of AA in my life is freedom and joy. I am no longer willing to live with the multitude of character defects that characterised my life while I was drinking. Step 7 is my vehicle to freedom from those defects. I pray for help in, identi in, in identifying the fear underneath the defect of character that comes up. And then I ask God to relieve me of that fear, or ask a higher power, knowing that we're not God, or just ask for help from others. Because 
if anything, con good conscience and God work through people. This method works for me without, without fail and is one of the great miracles of my life in Alcoholics Anonymous. And, you know, it depends on your definition of fear, uh, sorry, miracle. I mean, it's a miracle I don't drink on a daily basis, being an addict. And I was listening to a program recently where someone said, you know, if God is curing cancer, why can't he put grow back limbs of those who don't have them? It depends on how you look at a miracle of change in one's life. A miracle that we can cope with the reality of now is pretty much what I, is what I see. So what about these defects and shortcomings we talk about in step 6 and step 7? Well, I've put it in terms of endarkenment and enlightenment. Step 6 and step 7. Step 6, endarkenment. Step 7, towards enlightenment. Now, I know there's no such word as endarkenment, but it seems the exact opposite of enlightenment. So endarkenment feels right for me to use as an example. So the defects, or the seven deadly sins as they're called, pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed and sloth. So those are the defects, if you like. Pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed and sloth. And behind that is fear, fear of being found out, or fear of not having enough, or fear of feeling less than so we overcompensate by trying to acquire everything at once. And my shortcomings, not having enough of something, turn out to be the vir virtues. Step 7, faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice, prudence and temperance. And I put here, letting, in, letting go the dark and letting in the light. And I know it sounds a bit simplistic, but it, and it is really, but it, the actual behavioural and attitude change which happens, or psychological change, or even psychic change, as some people call it, is letting go of the defects and working on our shortcomings, improving our outlook through positive ways forward. And where do I get the wisdom to do that? Most often from those who have done it. Whatever is working through people is working for me. In the problem back then, I had an excess of darkness in my life. Today, I'm contingent on asking for help. Confidence may grow to lighter experiences. And living to good conscience improves my emotional and spiritual life today. My feelings fit with reality in the moment of now. So my feelings fit what is going on. That doesn't mean I'm never going to feel anger or any of those negative emotions I am going to feel them because I'm human but if I get back on track soonest mend it so if I ask for help I'm dealing with something I just know is undermining my ability to live well and share about it wherever it happens to be then I have a better chance of getting help and support to keep on a positive path and we all go through bad times, and we don't want it that way. So we can be in denial, find anger, frustration and, and depression in, in part of our living. We don't need to ignore it or suppress it. We need to deal with it. And the best way to deal with it is to share it. So secrets don't keep us stuck. And in other years, fear versus faith, ego versus esteem. All our feelings have their practical value, but to what extent? Prolonged extremes of feelings wear us down. In other words, the extremes of fear, putting on a brave face, and ego, where we cover of shame and guilt. Extremes of that for prolonged periods will, will bring us down, tip us into the dark again. Denial when shocks occur is part of the process of acceptance, and acceptance is about going towards the the faith and courage to keep on going and we have so many things we could be in denial about at the same time shocks to our system physically impacts of events around us so many things can be pulling us down if we don't know what they are so part of the process is working out what's bringing me down and how to get help to keep on track it doesn't mean it's going to be easy indeed it's the hardest thing to face life and not to try and fix it. 
The unacceptable truth becomes the truth of now, how we live today. Fellowship in recovery and in recovery we know our feelings, trust to truth as it unfolds. Because we don't know the truth until we start to engage with other people. We just have opinion and beliefs often based on history which can take us to the dark side rather than the light side. And another one, identifying fear, step six and seven. From extremes in step six to finding balance in step seven, which is developing our courage, faith and confidence on a daily basis to deal with the difficulties of life. Life is difficult, but when we know it's difficult, as M. Co M. Scott Peck said in his book The Road Less Travelled, when we accept it's difficult, then we can cope with it. That's essentially what the book was about although I haven't read it, that's essentially what people tell me about it, and I trust their judgment in this case. From living in fear, hiding with a brave face, and false pride, to feeling the fear and having the faith, courage and esteem to live the experience, open, honest and willing, to share and to trust to truth, love and wisdom, which we keep on getting from other people, we learn more of who we are today. And that's really step six and seven in a nutshell. It's not written about much in the, uh, the AA Big Book nor in the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions because it seems obvious, doesn't it? I mean, it seems obvious step six, defects of character based on fear or self-centered fear brings out pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed and sloth. And then step seven where we haven't had enough of the virtues, living life truthfully, with faith. So step seven, I'm working on my faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice, prudence and temperance, letting go of the dark and letting in the light. And I can get angry like I did last week. I didn't know where that came from. I haven't been that angry in years and years and years. It was being challenged and it was contempt prior to investigation which un unhinged me and I'm glad it did because it made me see made me see my vulnerability to being well just being a human being basically and I've got things going on now I've had goods arrive which are damaged and it's interesting how internet providers can go very silent when they don't want to admit who cares to admit they're at fault or sent me a faulty item I'm not going to get angry about it I need something fit for purpose and I'll deal with it as each day goes by but I don't need to be bound up by it and if the outcome is that I cannot do anything I'll hand it over not to God because God's not present to sort out my problems I'll hand it over to somebody who has the authority and influence maybe to help me sort it out I don't have to do it all myself and, it's, and that's not a cop-out either it's the biggest challenge often to let go of those things we cannot change and that's where the serenity prayer comes into play every day in every moment and the serenity prayer is about can do, can't do learning the wisdom to know the difference of those two parts of life and without it I guess I wouldn't have made sense of my limits you know, some, I don't know, some phrases around, you know, the, the world is your oyster, reach for the sky, all those things are good if they're based on some sound of, sort of sound basis. It's like you've got to put the foundations in before some of the dreams can be made and realised. I don't think there are any shortcuts. So the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience, as your faith, as your understanding of life is, agnostic, atheist or believer, it doesn't matter. It's a prayer of meditation which is towards improving our outlook to the possibilities and what we can't do. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And often the wisdom to know the difference is always, or yeah, often, pretty much always, in the moment of now and just for today.